<laughs> Hello, everybody. How are you doing tonight? Oh, 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 I'm getting an error occurred. Please try again later. Hmm. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Let me know if it's working. Ah, is it working? Yeah. Hey, hey, welcome and welcome to Vincent. Oh my goodness. It's been so long since I've heard from some folks out there. It's always an amazing, lovely thing when I get to connect again. And I'm seeing you. I am with you in the studio space, just as we once were, just in this virtual, virtual way. Okay. So folks, welcome. Welcome to the Living Room Community Arts studio live stream. It's been a week and thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much for hanging in there and just going with the flow as we changed up our schedule for this week. The theme is compassion and I've been doing my best to show myself some self-compassion. So wherever you might be in the world right now, whether you're in your own living room at home or in your studio or maybe you're on the bus or who knows? I'm hoping that you're also able to demonstrate some self-compassion for yourself where you're at. <laughs> it has been so long, Vincent. Yeah, it has. Oh my God. And Nye. Hello, Nye. Thank you for letting me know it's working. So if this is your first time joining us for a live stream, this is kind of what it's all about. For the next hour, we're going to spend time hanging out, making art on the prompt that we've drawn out of the hat. So it's going to be compassion, compassion, compassion. And I'm going to be using pen and ink to explore that theme. It's kind of like a point of departure, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. If you prefer to work on something completely different, maybe you're working on some art, maybe your art tonight is taking the form of poetry, maybe it's taking the form of mending or sewing or crocheting or collaging or building something, gardening even, whatever it might be, feel free to do what feels right for you, right? I'm not the boss of you. And of course, if you are working with pen and ink, or if you're interested in sharing what you're working on, we always love to hear. So again, if you're watching the live with us tonight, you can join in the chat. And just as we're saying, hello, Ashley, as if I see you, come on up in the comments, I might say hi back to you, just like I did there. And if you want to chat or ask questions or perhaps, you know, seek some support from the community, that's what we're here for. So you can use this space to do it. If you're watching it once it's archived later on, I may not be able to answer your questions, but you can always email me at info at livingroomcommunityartstudio.org. And that's a great way of keeping in touch and connecting and sharing what you're up to. And we always try to have a little show and tell after the live stream's over where I post what we've been working on. And you can, in the comments section, post whatever you're working on as well. So that might be links to things that you're proud of or things that are inspiring you. Maybe you have images of works of art or works in process that you want to share with the community. All of that is wonderful. Please feel free to share it over on our Facebook page. Okay. Now this is virtual, but same guidelines apply as if we were in the physical studio space with one another. We ask everyone to be supportive and encouraging of one another and of yourselves as well. We ask everyone to let me know or let one another know if we're saying or doing things that are making one another feel uncomfortable. You can just let me know. I love learning. And if you feel brave enough to share that in the space, if I put my foot in it, if I buy something that my mouth with my mouth that I can't pay for, let me know because it helps me grow. It helps me learn. Keep me accountable. And hopefully we can teach one another how we can be more supportive as we move forward and grow forward in this creative community. And what else? Hmm. What else am I forgetting? Yeah, we use this time to create with one another. Spontaneous, really just easygoing, as you can tell. And we chat. We chat, we share. And if you don't feel like chatting in the comments, that's okay too. You might just be in your own space and feel like, you know, not revealing yourself to the world. And that's okay too. So you do you wherever you're at. I appreciate you no matter where you are or how you participate. You're still contributing to the Art Hive vibes here. Okay. So thank you for being here. And uh, I guess it's time to get on with this creativity. So let's do a little bit of that. So as I was talking about, this week's theme is compassion. And in the Zoom group, it was a really interesting conversation that we ended up having just about what compassion meant to us, how we experienced it in our own lives, 
Oh, that's nice. See, we have a lovely bit of, uh, I love how you're owning that, Ashley. Ashley's saying tired, so just chilling. That's completely acceptable. So thank you for modeling that for the community. You're welcome to do that too. Um, yeah, we had a really interesting chat about what compassion was and what it looked like. It was a difficult thing to talk about. And this happens sometimes with some of the themes that are a little more personal. And remember, most of these themes, all of these themes came from the community. So they were suggestions that people gave me to throw into the hat so we could work on them. Hey, Kathy. Oh, my goodness. So good to hear from you. Look at that. That's lovely. <laughs> um, so I'm interested in continuing this creative conversation with everyone who joins us tonight in one way or another. And hopefully we'll keep on carrying it forward in our practice as we continue doing virtual hives, but moving through the summer and getting back out there in person with people even more. <laughs> um, compassion is so important and we often demonstrate it so easily and so effortlessly to everyone out there in the world. Uh, we demonstrate it, we discover it to, you know, our friends, strangers. We demonstrate it to people on the other side of the world, uh, environments, movements, we demonstrate it to animals, inanimate objects, but in our Zoom session, it was astonishing how little it came up about self-compassion, how we demonstrated compassion to ourselves, how we showed ourselves compassion. So I'm seeing Ashley demonstrate some compassion for Ashley saying more like brain tired. That's it, right? So owning where we're at, giving ourselves, you know, that's compassion, being able to acknowledge where we're at and just be with that place enough, accepting enough that once, you know, we can begin moving out of that place into a different place that helps us feel more whatever we need to feel or want to feel, right? It's like a, acknowledging those feelings so that we can free ourselves from them because sometimes if we don't acknowledge them, well, they just get louder, right? <laughs> and so I wanted, okay, before I move on to my own art tonight, and you know what, I don't know what I'm going to create, but this is, when I looked up the definition of compassion, one of the ones that I found that I really liked was this one from Merriam-Webster. So defining compassion as a sympathetic consciousness of others' distress together with a desire to alleviate it. Consciousness with the desire to alleviate that stress. And if we apply it to self-compassion, that's a really beautiful thing. An awareness, a consciousness, a kind of connection to what we are experiencing and a desire to relieve ourselves, like alleviate that stress. And I think it's not uncommon for us to so associate kindness with compassion as well. So we, that was a big word that came up, kindness. And if we combine that as well, like how to be kind to ourselves, I think there's a reason why it didn't come up in the conversation that much. I think it's difficult. I think it's freaking difficult. Yeah. And Vincent's saying, lovely today, Vincent is going to work on a large mixed media painting you've been working on for your grandmother <laughs> and you've been pro procrastinating. That is, I love that. Fantastic. Your work is so extraordinary. I have if there's a way of sharing it, I'd love to see it. Again, not the boss of you, but I love that. So giving yourself some time during tonight's live stream to return to something, to tend to something that will undoubtedly be nurturing and beautiful, a beautiful gift, beautiful gesture. I love it so much. And Kathy, oh, I like this. So this is a good point. Kathy's saying self-compassion can be challenging for me. I have to think about what's happening and am Ah, and am I showing myself some compassion? And am I showing myself some compassion? It is like a process. You're absolutely right. And Ashley asking, are those inks in the palette? Yes, they are indeed. And loving the support for one another. See, Vincent, people are liking the sound of that painting, that mixed media painting. And Ashley loving that drawing. Oh, the one that we made in the Zoom group. Yeah, it came from the group. It came from... The conversations we were having it's one of the reasons why i love working it's it's kind of selfish i suppose it's you know what i'm just going to start drawing i'm not going to think about this too much folks i could turn that paper all different ways but i'm just going to start with what feels right yeah i'm going to start with what feels right um 
And oftentimes, as you know, folks, for me, that's heart. The self-compassion, it's hard. So what is it? How? And again, this might be difficult to talk about. So if there are crickets out there, I won't be surprised. But what are the ways we can, what are the ways we find we encourage that within ourselves or make space for it? Is it what Vincent's doing right now, right? Protecting some time and deciding, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to get stuck in with this process that I've been, you know, putting off and lots of different reasons why we put things off. I've got a big piece that I'm uh, helping to finish up and polish up for Ontario Tech U waiting for me downstairs. It's been a few weeks and every day I say, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. And today's the day. And then what happens, right? Life happens. And I think in those moments, Ooh, sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but there's always a choice, isn't there? There's this response I have immediately. The inner critic gets active, starts being super negative. And, and then it is a practice, isn't it, Kathy, of saying, wait, 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 wait. I'm not, I don't have to listen to this voice. I don't have to choose to believe what this voice is saying. So now what? If I have a choice in how I interact with this negative voice, what do I do? And that's been a bit of a battle this week for me, especially whenever I reschedule programming. There's always this part of me that, oh, it feels horrible. And you know what? I want to thank folks who sent me some nice messages. Ashley, thanks for sending that nice message and just sort of saying, good on you. That was a nice acknowledgement, again, for the self-care piece. Not feeling like we have to do something just because I think it is a radical and sometimes political act to take care of ourselves. And Amanda, hey Amanda, oh good to see you there. Sorry, just catching up with the chat there. I'm going on a little bit of a rant. Amanda, it's so good to see you out there too. And Nye, Nye is crocheting a baby blanket for your cousin's newborn. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's another beautiful gesture of kindness and caring. So easy to do for other people. Well, you know what? Maybe I'm jumping to conclusions though. Maybe the process of creating that, and I know it is actually nigh. It's a it's a way of loving ourselves through loving someone else. I'm gonna make that assumption there. You might be going, no, but maybe it is, right? Before I, I jump on that, you know, the idea of making art for other people before we make it for ourselves. But sometimes that is the best way to slow up, to reconnect. Making art for other people is sometimes easier and sometimes more liberating. We can actually, it's a little cheat into our own creative power to make art for someone else. Because really, we're still making it for ourselves at the end of the day. And Amanda saying, I've been looking into, ooh, nice, some uh, Kristen Neff reading and exercises. So Amanda, if you want to expand on that a little bit more for the community, I would love to hear it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be great because I'm, I think it's, it's like, I don't know as much as I should about this Kristen Neff. And I would love to hear more about, because I feel like it touches upon everything we're talking about here. And folks, if you're familiar out there with this, please feel free to jump in. And again, what are the things that help you take care of you, help you help you practice self-compassion, right? We know how to do it for other people. How do we do it for ourselves? How do we build up that muscle, right? And ooh, on the note of sharing, Vincent says, I'll send uh, some progress pics later, but right now gluing moss on canvas. <laughs> That's wonderful. Oh my gosh. Oh, Vincent, it's been too long. Vincent, by the way, one of the first first uh, folks in the old studio space we had to inspire some uh, animal art. Those are beautiful, beautiful rats. Some lovely little uh, rat art, little paint on rat feet walking across the canvas. And such a fantastic experience for the community because they got to meet these lovely, beautiful creatures and have this really delightful experience of creative engagement with them. I was, I've was i been sorting through old photos because I have so many photos. My 
I have so many pictures of the art that we've made over the years. Um, and I feel like doing some kind of virtual retrospective exhibit, I don't know, something. Uh, but those pictures came up just the other day and it just, yeah, it filled me with joy to see them. And since from that point on, you know, those folks who remember the studio, we had other experiences of animals, um, cats, snakes, not like, like people would bring them. We didn't find them in the studio. <laughs> um, we had guinea pigs. Yeah, lots of different lovely little creatures, always checking in with folks in the environment to see if people were okay with it. But there's something really special when animals come into the space. It softens our hearts. It helps. Or sometimes it, you know, it reminds of us of an edge that we haven't yet had a chance to reconcile with or acknowledge within ourselves. So if Alpha's watching out there, Alpha might remember the day with the snakes, which was a great teaching experience for all of us. Um, but I think many friends were made and many, we learned a lot of things about ourselves and found ways to move around or work through or work around uh, different obstacles in our lives through working with these animals. And let's see here, I just wanna check up on this. So this is lovely, so this is great. <laughs> Ashley with the emojis. <laughs> <laughs> and I, oh, that's one thing I love about this. I love seeing all the emojis come up. So we've got wrap emojis. We've got cats and boxes. We've got little mice, mice and, oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. And Kathy's saying, oh, okay. So this is going back to Kristen Neff. Um, Kathy's saying, oh, Amanda, she's amazing. Did you do her self-compassion questionnaire? Okay, so this is new. This is for me, Amanda uh, and Kathy, very familiar. She is the guru of self-compassion, Amanda says. So this is interesting. This is good. We can learn from these, these beautiful, beautiful creators in the world who share their journeys with us. And they can maybe call us on some of our stuff. I think... It's too easy sometimes to fall back. And there's no, I think we don't need, like, again, sometimes it can become, I think we can maybe beat ourselves up a little bit when we're not compassionate to ourselves and at least speaking for myself. So that's not the point of this either. I think there's a generosity of spirit that we can cultivate so we can recognize when we're struggling we can recognize when there's room to expand and to practice and build and strengthen things. I think we can also recognize when we've had bad days and when we've had good days. It's as important to recognize the good days as it is the difficult ones. I don't know. So maybe that's part of the process too. So Vincent's saying, I was so excited to see you move the living room online because I was sad to see the old studio gone. Oh, yeah, no, a lot of folks were. I still get letters. And Vincent said, says, uh, my creative company tonight are you, the others here, my mouse, Louis, Louis and my cat, Bug. <laughs> that sounds like some, some good company. That sounds like some lovely company. I've got the animals in my life. Animals really came up strong in the, uh, the whole conversation we were having in Zoom. And again, yeah, animals, they find they are a shortcut, I think. Something so, so, so beautiful about the way they just cut through everything in our lives and find a way to just ask for what they need so honestly. And in that process, what is that? Tell me about what that is. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop ranting. If someone else wants to share just like how animals you know and there might be people out there who don't have animals and that's okay too but i think there is something in that that animals for a lot of us are the gateway to self-compassion you know let's see what colors i want here oh oh i don't like this oh mm, mm. not a huge fan of this paintbrush so i'm just throw that over there let's see what i got there we go Let's see if this one's a little bit better. Yeah. So I am working with some inks. 
I've got just a whole bunch of normal pens here. Is anyone else out there working with pen and ink tonight? And you don't have to work with inks like I'm working with here. It can just be, you know, whatever kind of stuff you have hanging about. And I think that was one of the reasons why it was made as a suggestion, because almost everyone has a pen. Almost everyone has um, some kind of drawing implement that, you know, hanging around. Maybe like, like we don't often see them as art making tools. They're not as colorful, you know, but just as fun to use. And I've had lots of fun scribbling and doodling and drawing and tracing and all of those things. So I like that we've been able to open that up and that's what we drew. And it's interesting that we drew it with compassion. I'm always looking for a link between the theme, the point of departure, um, thematically and the tool or the technique we're working with. And I think, you know what? I like the limitations of pen and ink. So maybe I shouldn't play with these inks so much and just get back to the pen. I like the fact that it provides a framework and there's structure to it. And maybe it just gives us ourselves permission to not have to reinvent things, to not have to be all that and a bag of chips. We can just start with where we're at, put the pen on the paper and see, you know, take the pen for like a, a walk across the page, see where the line takes us. And it's, again, I think a very, it's not necessarily a forgiving medium, but it is a simple medium. And in that, I think we give ourselves permission to just do whatever and not, we're not so hard on ourselves, maybe. <laughs> I'm actually excited that I'm breaking out the inks. <laughs> Yeah, these are a little bit of a, these are my, I have a few splurges creatively. And these ones, um, I was introduced to, they're brusho ink. So these are the ink crystals. And again, I'm not making money, I'm not making money from everybody, anybody doing this. Um, but they're crystal, so like dry crystal inks and you can dilute them with water like I've done here to sort of bring them up. You can also just sprinkle them and spray them and let the colors go crazy. Uh, they're interesting and fun and I still don't understand them, but I think like sometimes it's just really nice to see some color and to play. And I like using the inks with like a, like a, like a Sharpie or something that's non-water soluble. So the black lines stay black and they don't run. And later on, I might introduce a normal pen that does bleed and run with some water because that's an exciting kind of thing to experiment and play with as well. And Vincent saying, so highlighting, just bringing that theme back to, you know, what is it about animals? And animals love unconditionally. I think, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe that's what it is. I mean, we don't have that in our own lives. Us humans certainly don't love unconditionally as much as we want to, as much as we try to. It's kind of impossible for us to, and maybe sometimes that's a good thing. Um, but uh, yeah, animals do. They're good teachers. They're really good teachers, aren't they? Yeah. And Amanda on the theme of pens, I find with pen, I need to be using my self-compassion tools as pen does not correct easily. There we go. See, there's another wonderful link. There's another interesting link that maybe there's also with the permission just to do there's also this like oh, oh what is it oh. when we we can't erase we can't make it disappear what we put on the paper stays on the paper unless you have one of those kind of fancy erasable pens but you know that's that's a story for another time um <laughs> but yeah that's exactly it it's sort of enforced self-compassion because when we make the mistake or make the thing that we think might be a mistake, it kind of asks us to live with it. It says live with it. Just sit with it. Take some time with it. See what happens. Work with it. Adjust it. Roll with it. Cover it up. Transform it. There's lots of things we can still do, but once it's there, it's there. Um, and yeah, so that definitely invites us into that space of radical self-compassion. So here's a question for everybody, for you. What is the difference between self-compassion and radical self-compassion? What is the difference there? I got some ideas. And Ashley asking what kind of inks? So there are these inks. So let me hold this up. 
Again, not a sales thing. Oh, here we go. Boop, boop. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Brusho. Cho. Comcroft Brusho color inks. They are... I don't know. Well, that doesn't... That's not the best show. Let's see if I can find another color here. A little splurge. So they're little tiny granules of ink. Super, super loaded with pigment. Really bright, vibrant. And every once in a while, I like to introduce something <laughs> into my creative uh, kit here. It's not a kit. It's it's a it's it's verging on hoarding, and I say that with much love. But I I think every week I say I need to tidy up. I need to tidy up. But I really do. Um, but this was a splurge. It was a nice splurge. It gives me time to play sometimes and experiment. And I still don't understand all the things I can do with these inks. They're quite lovely. And if you're looking to try something new, if you like playing with inks, but you also don't like liquid inks, often they dry up on me. I don't use them enough to really get the most out of them. So these are a nice replacement for that because I can use a little bit at a time and activate them whenever I want to. And these are water uh, soluble as well, so I can reactivate them later on once they're dried. I think we're going to find that out. <laughs> and uh, Nye saying, when I saw the theme, I oh, oh, I prepared the journal you gave me and my fanciest pen, oh, <laughs> only to remember the blanket is unfinished and I see her tomorrow. That's okay. No judgment. No judgment. I like the fact that you were willing to go there, though. Thank you. Um, again, I'm not going to like, what, am I going to get angry if you don't want to work on the theme with me? No, I'm not the boss of you. There are so many other things. I What I like about the structure we've been playing with this year with the live streams, the live hives, I I like that, you know, to be frank, I needed to turn things over to the community. It was another act, I suppose, of self-compassion on my part, because instead of coming up with something on my own every week, it was beginning to take a toll. It was beginning to feel like, um, I think I used to joke that I was getting bored with myself, but um, it wasn't so much that as just being tired and and expecting a lot, like too much perhaps of myself. And that's one of the things that can happen when we're not sharing space. Um, like in person, I think we just ask a lot of ourselves, or maybe it doesn't even matter the in-person or not. I think a lot of us, a lot of us, we expect ourselves to be so much and do so much. And um and there's a lot of reasons for that, right? But I, I I, didn't need to. And I think I came to that realization in part because of the wonderful community members that we have out there who from time to time remind me of that, that I don't have to do things on my own. Um, and I just got to a point where I thought it's actually exciting to me. It's interesting to me to think about, well, what if we put the themes in other people's hands? And so everyone started giving suggestions and then it gives me this freedom that I can just draw things out of a, like a jar in this case and a bowl every week and move from there. Um, so, you know, I might not have chosen pen and ink. That's, I guess, where I'm going, right? I might not have chosen pen and ink. I might have been, you know, if I wasn't here with you tonight, I might be doing something completely different. I might not even be making art at all. So making this time, protecting this time and working with you in this way is is, you know, it gives, I love it. I love it. I, it's needed in my life because I don't often make time like this for myself. So this is me in selfishly making time for myself, using you folks as an excuse. <laughs> so I'm still learning. I'm still practicing. I'm still practicing. I'm getting better at it. <laughs> oh, interesting. That's having an effect there. And Vincent's saying, different media uh, I've used in this work. Oh, in the work, the mixed media. So here we go. Love it. Moss, birch, bark, wood, glitter, and paper, and a paper wasp nest. So cool, says Ashley. And I agree. And <laughs> so before I move on to nice comment, I will just, there's, um, Vincent, this is just, Vintage Vincent, I love this, incorporating all these awesome found pieces, these delightful 
and unusual, non-traditional things in an artwork. Um, the paper wasp nest I find particularly interesting. They are so beautiful. Uh, I'm, yeah, it's difficult. I would love to see pictures. If you don't mind, I'll share them with the community. I would love to see how you incorporate that because those are beautiful things, beautiful architectural, gorgeous little things. Um, works of art. Again, the works of art that we see in nature. Wasps nests, like the paper wasps nests, are one of those things. Let's see. And then Nye, of course, when I, the question of radical, what's the difference between radical self-compassion and self-compassion? <laughs> Nye just getting that surfer, that California surfer dude. Uh, I've been there. One of them is radical, dude. I'm giving that voice. I'm describing. I don't know if you use that voice. I just feel, I hear the Keanu Reeves uh, from Point Break in my head <laughs> when you say that. And Amanda is saying, when I think of the word radical, I consider acceptance of things others may not so easily accept. Mm. And I know I use radical validation with my son. Oh, so something um, there, there, yeah, there's this, it takes a kind of bravery, a courageous, just do it kind of energy sometimes to step into that place of what is radical. Radical may not be accepted by anyone else. Radical may not be understood, sometimes not by ourselves. We just may know it's something that needs to be done in order to move forward. Um, and sometimes it means, yeah, doing things that may, you know, it could possibly displease other people, maybe displease ourselves sometimes, but it's prioritizing something that matters the most, maybe. So it's easy, again, to show it to people, other people in our lives sometimes. Not so easy to show to ourselves. So if we show radical self-compassion, it is just drawing a line under it. It's saying, this is, this is, I'm going to do this because it is the most important thing. I may not understand it. I may not be able to, it's like I'm on my way. And the only way to get there is by stepping across. Now I'm mixing my metaphors and I'm all over the place, but it feels like that, right? I mean, what do we, when we use the word radical in other areas, we often, you know, it's often related to politics. Um, you know, we think of things like when people are radicalized, there is this negative connotation that comes with it. This unreasonable kind of quality that is sometimes aligned with it, but it doesn't have to be, right? We often like... Sometimes many things in the past have been considered radical in a negative way. We now know are the only way, the right way, the just way. But it took stepping into that place of extreme self-care or extreme acknowledgement to prioritize something. Trust, faith, knowing that perhaps we're moving in the right direction. And Kathy's saying, I like that. I, I like that definition of radical acceptance. Hey, yeah. Uh, mine is similar. It's about accepting me as I am, as opposed to judging me. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, I like that too, because that's the, yeah, it's just, I'm not going to judge. I'm going to love. I'm going to, I am going to embrace. If I combine those two uses there between Amanda and Kathy, I get this, an image that comes to me is, is hugging um, this is going to be artsy fartsy. This is going there. I, I had the image I had was just embracing and the inner child, just embracing the heck out of that inner child, like a moment of intervention of just saying everything else stops. I pay attention to you. This is where I'm placing my allegiance right now. And Amanda says, yes, and finding something positive is sometimes so hard. Well, some um, positive with radical, like with that radicalness of self. Oh. Well, maybe that's the other piece of it as well. Maybe we don't need to find something positive. You know, maybe because perhaps we're not in that place yet where we can. We're not in the place where we're not in the place where we can recognize that. We haven't learned how to recognize it yet, maybe. Hmm? 
I'm doing a very dangerous thing tonight. I have my water next to my mug of water. Just keeping an eye on that, folks, because I do not want to wash my paintbrush in my mug of water. There we go. Just sharing that with you. And okay, yeah, and uh, Ashley's saying, ho, 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 ho. A new journal page for you, Mary. Look at it. Says sail love. Sail love. Sail love. So is it a page? Of... I like that idea of sail love. I've been uh, working with and letting myself be inspired by Karita Kent for this, this summer of work and finding a lot of interesting crossovers. So if you're not familiar with Karita as they call themselves later in their life, or Karita Kent, um, uh, an artist of the 60s, 70s, uh, known as uh, the art nun, the radical, um, they called lots of different names, not all good, was a part of civil rights movement, of recognizing the value in like what years later, what a decade later would be like the punk movement would claim of repurposing and recognizing everyday objects in life, in print, in advertising, um, uh, repurposing found objects into art, you know, working with throwaway objects, throwaway phrasing and then reorganizing them, breaking them down, collaging them. Uh, manipulating in them in various ways to find new, new, new truths, right? And for her, art became a form of prayer. Again, she was a nun, so there was that, you know, kind of religious overlay to a lot of the early work, especially. But as she moved through life, it kind of became less, and it became more about encountering the mystery of things with um, and how we find faith without knowing and things like that. But that just reminded me of that. There's a long way around. Um, but that idea of says sail love, sail love. <laughs> and then Ashley correcting saying self-love. But isn't that interesting how the two things just felt so natural in my world? Well, there you go. You got to create a Kent story out of it. So thank you. <laughs> and it does say self-love, right? Which is a radical thing for any of us to do. And a radical thing for me to do as well. It's not easy. Whenever I create these hearts with tooth, like these sort of teeth around them, these spikes around them, I'm reminded of that. There's something edgy about self-love and self-compassion. There's something edgy about prioritizing self. When a lot of the world around us doesn't necessarily want us to do that. We're encountering a lot of uh, mixed messages, a lot of old, we're trying to deconstruct a lot of messages we've learned through our whole life about selfishness and pride and, and what? I don't know. You tell me. And Vincent's saying, some of my best ever art came from deep sorrows. Sometimes art is a way to express feelings without meaning to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Vincent, that I love that. It's, it's trusting. And again, that sense of moving into the unknown. We don't need to necessarily understand everything as it's emerging. And I think there, if we understood it, we wouldn't necessarily need to make art about it. We wouldn't need to express it. Um, we have these, these sort of, un, you know, impulses that just come at us sometimes with creativity, where we want to do something or need to do something or to tend to something. Um, and sometimes I have this with baking, actually. I just, it'll be like, I need to bake cookies today. I need to bake cookies. It has to happen. It's the one thing I know has to happen. I don't want cookies. I won't, you know, there's lots of reasons why making cookies is not important in that moment. Uh, so many things, but there's this impulse there that whenever I get, it's like, okay, this is, I gotta pay attention to this. And I think art any kind of creative self-expression has something in common with that. Just follow it. Just try see what happens. What if, what if we follow it? What if we follow that path? And Amanda's saying selfish-ish, having the characteristics of self. <laughs> yes. I like that. Thank you, Amanda. 
And Ashley's saying, remind me because some of the teeth are going outwards and some of the teeth are going in. So we're talking about the teeth in this image. Uh, so is that self-love for other people as in the edginess you have to protect those around you and then the ones on the inside or those teeth to protect you and your self-love? Interesting. You, you're you onto something there. Absolutely. The teeth in this, sometimes I feel like for me are... And I know there's a tongue sticking out, so you're teasing a little bit, maybe. I know I can sense the twinkle. I can sense the trickster energy coming at me. But um, I think it's just an honest portrayal of the difficulties of that we encounter with this compassion, this prioritizing of self, the kindness towards self, the openness, the how difficult it can be to follow through with the desire to alleviate our own distress or suffering, to even acknowledge it sometimes is hard. And so some of these teeth are that. Some of the teeth, I think, are a positive thing, maybe. Sometimes the teeth is like, I bite. I can bite. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I can protect. I can attack if I choose to. Sometimes I may want to. I think there's also this recognition that sometimes I attack myself. Sometimes I bite myself. And I don't want to do that. I don't mean to do that. But I will occasionally, from time to time, catch myself doing that. And it becomes a bit of a battle. Normally, right? If you're, you know, there would be this sense of, oh, I should stop doing that. That's not good. So why is it that sometimes, and I'm just being completely honest, if I, maybe other people can relate, this feeling of this isn't good for me. And I'm putting myself in this position. So stop. Stop. And why is it difficult to stop? Why is it difficult to walk back and to let go of that and to do something that's healthier, better, more loving towards myself to alleviate the distress that I'm in or myself, right? So I think it's a bit of both, right? Um, and I think there's nothing wrong with hearts being a little sharp. I think hearts being lovey-dovey romance, bleh, whatever. For me, hearts are tough. Hearts are sinewy. Hearts are a muscle. Hearts, you know, they bring it. They they are like a machine. So I think that's where I always return to the theme of hearts. And yeah, sometimes some teeth. Some teeth to make it a little more, just to get purchase, purchase. And so in fact, I'm going to emphasize that a little bit more. I'm going to emphasize some of those teeth a little bit more inside. But it's something I think about quite a lot, right? The relationship we have with ourselves, and as Vincent's saying, I think I don't always start it out consciously. Sometimes it just happens, and then I realize when it feels right that, oh, I think this is why that's there. But I don't want to analyze and create at the same time. That's uh, salute my sources. Another Karita Kent quote. They are different processes, so I can save that for another day. But I think I worked with heart so much that I understand that about myself. And Ashley says, oh, <laughs> YouTube made you split your comment. That's okay. <laughs> and no teasing, I promise. And then there's a so sorry. Oh, why are you sorry? I love having these discussions. And it's one of the reasons why I'm here. And there are certain things I feel really comfortable sharing and talking about. Because I've had time to think about them and consider them. And it's one of the reasons why I do the work that I do here with the living room. And isn't it funny? I wanted to, I wanted this to be something on a much larger piece. And it's turning out to be a much smaller piece here, much more compact. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I know what I'd like to do. All right. Let's grab another page. Let's grab another page with the time I have left. Let's see. Yep. Okay. Let's see what I what can I do here? Do I have another book page here? Oh, I've got to. Ah, there we are. Oh, that's not gonna help. So I'm just going to throw some color on here real fast using these inks. 
Which side do I like? There we go. So let's see, let's like do some green here. And folks, again, this usually runs from seven till eight. But if you're dropping in now, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the conversation. Always interesting conversations here. It's always such an honor to be here and share space with everyone and to create with everyone and learn what people are doing. But learn what people are feeling as well. There's something really beautiful to know. None of us are alone in what we're experiencing, even though we might be on our own. And just a reminder to anyone out there, we've had some fantastic resources listed in the hive on the theme of uh, compassion. So Kristen Neff was one of the folks that was mentioned. Um, and if anyone is struggling with this, you know what, if you've got other resources you wanna share, throw them in the chat. Or you can email me at uh, the studio info at livingroomcommunityartstudio.org and I can always put them in the show and tell. I'm, I'm getting better at that. I'll put it in the show and tell post that we do on Facebook so that people can check out some of these resources and learn a little bit more. But if you have other resources that you'd like to share, perhaps, you know what, and it doesn't have to be, you know, academic or self-help. Maybe these are books or music. Maybe they're songs that just help you reconnect with that tenderness towards yourself. Maybe these are poems that just capture what it's like, the struggle that so many of us feel when it comes to creating, managing, maintaining, building, strengthening self-compassion, claiming, reclaiming self-compassion for ourselves. There are lots, lots of reasons why these things are difficult. We don't always understand why they're difficult, but sometimes we just know that there's something beautiful that art or creative self-expression does that can help us access those spaces and those moments a little bit more effectively. So if you've got some suggestions, let me know. Send an email, follow up, let me know. Where are the, ha ha ha, there's the paintbrush that I like. Share them. Feel free to share them. Let's see. There we go. Let's soften that up a little bit. Because these are interesting journeys that we take. So I think, you know, we've talked about the struggle. I want to hear if folks are still out there. I want to hear about the successes. Let's focus on that for a little while, too. The things we do that bring us joy, the things we do that help us know we're moving in the right directions, the things we do that we want to celebrate when it comes to how we take care of ourselves, what we prioritize, the self-compassion, the self-compassion we create for ourselves. I've shared one of mine earlier, the sense of taking space and giving self time when you know I'm not feeling so well, right? Being able to reorganize something and not being afraid to say, hey, folks, guess what? I need to take a break tonight, right? And seeing what happens when people understand and they embrace that. I think, don't think there's ever been a moment where I have, and this is something really lovely to remember, there's never been a moment where I've prioritized my self-care, where I've had compassion for myself, where someone else, well, has come back at me in such a way to confirm or to reinforce the negative views of embracing that radical self-compassion. Usually, almost always, people are supportive. People champion it. People admire it sometimes. People find ways to learn from it or to share their own experiences of what it's like. So it's never, you know, it's so rarely resulted in a bad thing. So let's take a moment to talk about the successes, to talk about just the wonderful things that come from that, right? That's a good place to end tonight. And Vincent saying, posted a picture of the work in the Facebook for the live. Oh, thank you. So folks, check it out. Uh, there's a few, there's a few links in the Facebook page. So if you don't see it under one image, go to another to see it. Oh, I am very excited, Vincent. Thank you so much. That's great. That's great. 
And folks, you could do the same thing too. If you'd like to share images or links to what you're working on or to the people that inspire you or helping you on this journey of self-compassion, or perhaps you have some pen and ink resources you'd like to share. We haven't spent a whole lot of time talking about that world tonight. Um, outside of sometimes acknowledging the limitations that can help make us stronger in the work that we do sometimes through working with pen and ink, just sort of like, mm, just encouraging that self-compassion when it comes to creative processes. But let's see, Amanda says, aha, interesting. So Amanda says, things like this, stepping outside my comfort zone and joining the conversation. Amanda, more please. Yeah. Your voice, all, you know, for all the folks that felt compelled to share, because there's nothing wrong with not sharing, with not speaking and joining the chat. Um, but for everyone who did, thank you. And it is something to celebrate, you know, being able to own these processes and this, the knowledge, the lived experience you carry, your voice matters. You are, everything you've contributed tonight has value. And sometimes it's value, but through the chat, with the silliness, with the jokes, with the love, the levity, um, sometimes it's about insight and observations like the one Ashley made, you know, about the art that was unfolding here. And then the reference sharing, that just like all of it's enriched this experience for everyone else who might watch it after once it's been archived, right? It's a beautiful thing. Uh, so thank you. And I'm so glad you recognize that because it can feel really um, uncomfortable to type something in a chat, to make yourself seen in that way. It can feel ooh, a little scary. So, and Kathy says, when I feel I need some self-care, I put the kettle on and get it one of my fancy teacups and saucers and lay a cookie on the side and just enjoy a tea. That is a lovely little image. That's a lovely um, ritual. That's a lovely ritual to give yourself. Oh. Rituals can play is such an important role too in marking moments of self-compassion when we like I guess maybe that's what the cookie baking thing is for me isn't it it's a ritual a process of ritual that has a beginning a middle and an end and it is just this stepping away from everything into something else where I know what to expect and I know yeah it's a ritual it's just like that little moment giving yourself this process to be a part of and just to focus with I wonder, and how do you feel? Like that's a, how do you feel after that or through that? It has all these other little effects that we don't consider, do it, doesn't it? And Nye saying self-compassion is definitely something that Nye struggles with, but I do take my med ah, ah, my mediatrion reliably and when needed. Did I pronounce that correctly? Probably not. But that is uh, also a super important thing as well, right? When we talk about Oh, when we talk about um, the things that keep us healthy, that keep us grounded, that keep our brains working, that keep ourselves, you know, doing the things we need to do, medication, um, like kind of destigmatizing the processes around that, around seeking support and receiving support and learning how to advocate for ourselves more effectively and demand more from a system that doesn't always recognize what we need together we can do a lot of change, but usually it starts with ourselves doing something because it's important for us or essential for us in some cases. So yeah, that is self-compassion. I applaud that. Applaud that. Just like that. Yeah. It's something that can be overlooked. It's something that can be overlooked. What else? Let's see. Kathy says, I never thought of it as a ritual. That makes so much sense. Ah, ha, ha. Yeah. Rituals. If, if uh, we, you know, rituals um, happen in lots of shapes, sizes, they come in a lot of different, you know, packages, I was going to say. And some of us have had uh, bad experiences with rituals. Some of us have had boring experiences with rituals. Some of us, you know, are just so used to things in our life, like seasonal things or cultural traditions that we don't think of them as rituals anymore, but they are. And I think one of the things that helps me is 
again, that grounding piece. And again, you do you, not the boss of you. But there is something about being able to recognize it that I like and to do it with intention uh, rather than letting it happen. I like that the cup of tea and the cookie on the side. It sounds like there's just such a beautiful clarified process in that. It's simple, it's elegant, and it is a ritual that you enter into with intention, right? And I bet other people have rituals. There are rituals. Like the, when I take my medication in the morning and at night, that is its own ritual. And I have certain things that remind me to take my medications, things like that, right? There's a million different ways we prioritize self, but we don't always do it uh, with intention and awareness. And sometimes it's it's a fun thing to remember that we can enter into it with greater intention. And maybe it sparks something. Maybe it creates another opportunity to enjoy it or experience it with a different way. Like making art is can also be a ritual, right? These nights are rituals for me where I come and I connect and I create and I chat. And I have this time with you. It's a ritual for me in that way. Oh, my medication. So <laughs> not correcting me there. I just gave a super fancy, super fancy name <laughs> to a medication. Someone out there was listening and going, what? <laughs> Some uh, doctor or pharmacist was just about to pick up the phone and call and say, what are you recommending? What are you suggesting? What's happening? Who's taking that? That doesn't exist. <laughs> but yeah, medication, taking medication, huge self-care. And we don't we don't really talk about it. That's actually something I in Art Hive that I was really impressed by, astonished by. Um it was just something that began happening in that space that was a little surprising and then totally wonderful at the same time with people having more honest conversations about the things they did for themselves health-wise um, in that realm specifically that they needed to do. Just having really honest conversations about, yeah, medications. Like, this is what I do. This is what I do for myself. This is what I need. Um, sometimes it turned into conversations about, oh, this is I'm having, you know, this isn't working for me anymore, or my doctor said this or whatever. I I really appreciated that um, it seemed like there was a need, there was a space, there was a desire to shine a light on that and to normalize it for everyone. And maybe it sort of signaled to me that maybe we don't have that. Maybe there's not that space for conversation in other realms. So I, you know, sure, I I welcome it. Not everyone has to, not everyone will want to talk about that. Um and there are different ways of being open and sharing, but I think it's a beautiful, it can be a beautiful thing to acknowledge the things we do for ourselves. There's the compassion, because that is a radical, radical act of self-compassion. It is, you know, it is. And it's partly because there are still, although it's unbelievable, we need to, like it's unbelievable to sometimes think of this, there are still people out there who will try to minimize people's experiences with that. Yeah, not good. And Vincent saying, art, ooh, ooh, this is a nice and interesting thought to have coming up near the close of a live stream. Vincent saying, art is a compulsion to create something. So there is, when we talk about what art is, art is dot, 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 a compulsion to create things. Hmm. For some folks, a compulsion. For some folks, well, I guess it is a compulsion in, in many cases. I think when we see things, it's hard to resist, isn't it? It's one thing, I, <laughs> another thing about archive that I love, showing up with supplies. It's hard to not want to create something. It's hard to not want to pick up some supplies and get making. Uh, and I see, like, it's one of those things I always like playing with when, you know, parents are there and they, they just assume it's something for their kids and that's nice and that's lovely and everything. But it's always this interesting moment of watching them beginning to think, you know, you begin to see, like, they begin to start dabbling or they might pick up something and just start noodling. 
And before you know it, they're involved in it just as much as their kids are. It's always a great moment. Always a great moment. Because you know me, I'll yell at people. I'll, I'll sometimes gently harass them and other times just, you know, annoyingly, <laughs> presumptuously say, you're an artist too. You can make art too. Start making some art. Um, Grown-ups don't always appreciate that, believe it or not. Uh, and I'm getting better at how I do that, I think. But it's always it's always a lovely thing to see people begin to settle into that vibe. Maybe they're asking themselves what if, or maybe they just can't help themselves. Maybe it's a compulsion. And Amanda says, a calling. Art is a calling. Now we could have a whole other hour a whole other hour of talking about what that even means. The compulsion to create, the compulsion to make our mark, to show the world we were here, to show ourselves we were here, to document, to curate, to commit to something when perhaps there's so many other things in life that we, we can't necessarily commit to in the way we want. Maybe it's an escape. For some folks, maybe it's an escape. For other folks, maybe it's an education. Is art self-compassion? <laughs> I'm seeing some, some laughing there. Yeah. And if you talk to professional artists, sometimes they will say uh, art is a curse. <laughs> when you have that deadline or that commission or that thing that you need to get to and for whatever reason you just can't or you don't or you don't want to okay what do i want to do here hmm <laughs> oh <clears throat> interesting all right and that's, yes, thank you, Vincent. So, yes, Vincent saying, I love the destigmatization de de of taking care of your physical and mental health. And yeah, let's not forget physical, because physical, that's, you know, why we do the thing. And the mental is connected to the physical. Mm. And I think artists lead the way. I think, or people not just want to talk about artists again for folks who are watching or listening and it's not just about people who consider themselves uh, so-called fine artists or professional artists and all of that. You know this. When we talk about art in the living room or in art hives in general, what we mean is we're, we're talking about our inherent impulses, our the inherent desire or need or compulsion uh, or calling that we have to express ourselves, to make something that wasn't there that didn't exist before like that didn't exist suddenly have it be in the world to take a an idea that turns into a thought and have that thought transformed into a thing or something outside of ourselves because sometimes art isn't a thing right sometimes art is a gesture sometimes art is only here for a moment and then it disappears and goes away with the rain you know um we're talking about our birthright the creative birthright we all have, that we all possess to tell our stories, to make our mark, to raise awareness, to communicate with one another. And art, that's what art does. Art communicates. That's what it is, really. It's a way of communicating. If I just made an enormous stamp, <laughs> maybe I have, but I kind of like this. I'm so... Usually what ends up happening, I start uh, creating something and I always aim to finish it and have it wrapped up by the end of the live stream. And inevitably, I don't finish it and I keep on working on it. So the next time you see this, so let me do a little, I'll do a little sort of show closey up there. The next time you see this, I might end up adding in more texture. I might highlight different things. I think I like the idea of adding in some more line work here because I really like what ended up happening on that page around the outside and when you see me post it it might look a little different and that's okay and you know what same goes out to you wherever you're at you don't have to wrap up whatever it is you're working on you can keep working on it you can give yourself more time after the stream has ended to continue work like vincent 
Do I have a feeling now that you've started working on this piece, it's just going to keep on going? That's often what happens to me. I usually, there's like a million other things I need to do, but I just fall in love with what I'm doing here. And we'll keep on working. And for folks who come and participate in the live stream, there is there is a joke that I never end things on time. I'm horrible at time management. Um, but it's because I enjoy this and I enjoy this conversation. So, wow, what am I going to take away from tonight? What are you going to take away from tonight, folks? There's a thought. I think I'm going to take away that, that lovely little reminder that it's self-compassion is is kind of about commitment. It's uh, about consciously entering into a commitment with yourself to alleviate the suffering that you've recognized within yourself, to acknowledge the desire to alleviate that suffering and doing what you can to follow up on that, even if we don't always do it perfectly. I think I'm also going to take away this lovely conversation we're having about ritual and creativity and and just lovely that people are making art for other people tonight, as well as making art for ourselves. I love the acknowledgement that working with something like pen and ink can be scary sometimes, because once that line goes down, it's there. And we kind of have to deal with it. We kind of have to work with it. And for anyone else out there who was working with pen and ink, thank you. Thank you. And how are you feeling now with that process? Have you found some self-compassion with that as we've moved through tonight? Or have you just kind of thrown it away and <laughs> grabbed something else that you feel a little bit more comfortable with? Thank you to everyone else who's just been taking this time to, to relax, to let their fuzzy, tired brains just do what you need to do. Thank you for doing that without judgment on yourself, well, hopefully without judgment. And for everyone who might be watching once this live stream has ended, maybe you're watching it once it's been archived. Thank you for joining us then as well. I always love hearing from folks who watch the live streams afterwards. And some folks may be listening or watching and then not commenting because they're just sussing things out here. I hope that it's been an interesting experience for you. And Amanda's saying, oh, lovely connection. Thanks, everyone. So that's what you're taking away. I love that. And Amanda says, I'll be back now that I've done it once. Yay! And you know what? Another thing, it doesn't usually take place on Fridays. So if you like Fridays being the night we do this, uh, let me know. We can make this uh, we can make this thing happen if that's what works best for everyone. I've been trying to host it on Wednesdays, but if Fridays are the night that people like, let me know. Send me an email. Uh, throw it in the chat in the comments here or whatever. Folks, you can find me in a whole bunch of different ways. But if you do want to get a hold of me, email is usually the best way to do that. And Kathy's saying, oh, well, Vincent first. Vincent's saying, the hardest part of art for me is how long it takes, but it's worth it to commit to it. <laughs> Sometimes hours fly by. Other times you have to do an hour and put it away for later. That's, yeah, that's right. It's like a creative boundaries with ourselves. And Kathy's saying, thank you. I really enjoy this time. The conversation is always so interesting. Oh, and my voice is so soothing. Oh, thank you. My goodness. I don't know. Oh, I'm just going to say thank you and put that in my pocket for a rainy day. Don't deflect, Mary. Just say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and Vincent's saying, thank you for sharing yourself and this time with us. Oh, folks, thank you. Okay. I'm going to do what Vincent was just suggesting, and I'm going to stop. I'm going to put it away. And I'm going to do a proper wrap up. So thank you. And thank you for sharing what you've been taking away from this night. I hope everyone has been able to take a little piece for themselves. And uh, yeah, if you want to share some of your work, just a reminder, throw it up there. I'm going to go check out Vincent's piece right now, a work in progress. Always so exciting to witness stuff in that in that period of creation. Thank you for that courageous thing to share it, Vincent. Thank you. And to everyone else out there who's joining us tonight, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I've said thank you a million times tonight, but I truly mean it. Um, and of course, okay, I got a reminder, folks. We, you know, we're on coffee, as you see there. If 
you do have the capacity to support us to buy us a coffee, feel free to visit our coffee page. I think the, the link is in the doobly-doo below. Um, check it out. Let us know what you think there. But otherwise, I'm just glad you're here. That's what matters most. Thank you for participating in our live stream archive. And I'll see you again next week with a brand new theme and a brand new technique. If you have some that you'd like to add into the mix, send them my way. It's always good to freshen up the suggestions in there and uh, get me creating and thinking about some new ways of creating and some new things to create about. This only happens with you folks. So thank you for being here. Now go, go do what you got to do and take care of yourself. I'm not the boss of you. Have a wonderful evening, everyone, or day, depending on when you're watching this. <laughs> Bye, folks. <laughs>